For most people, as they're watching their favorite team play in a stadium big or small, maybe enjoying a hot dog or a soda, they're not thinking about safety. Where are my fire exits or is this hallway sprinklered? But in today's day and age, where stadiums are far more than just a place where your favorite sports teams play, achieving fire and life safety within their massive walls is becoming an increasingly complicated task. And there are increasingly complicated methods of achieving it. Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. The number of stadiums in the U.S. isn't really known. A list on Wikipedia of stadiums by capacity in America counts all the way to 241, and the smallest one on that list still holds 18,000 people. The biggest, the University of Michigan Stadium in Ann Arbor, holds almost 110,000. Since it's August, and that means preseason football is upon us, we thought we'd take a look at stadium safety in this episode of Learn Something New. Ironically, a major part of what stadium safety looks like in 2019 has nothing to do with sports at all. In fact, it's everything else that goes on regularly in stadiums these days that present the most challenges, namely concerts, where crowds are exerting themselves more than at sports events, typically enjoying more, shall we say, substances, are located in areas that weren't designed for seating, like on the field, and there could be things like pyrotechnics going off at the same time. Together, all of this presents some pretty difficult and unique fire and life safety challenges. But there are plenty of examples of stadiums that have met this challenge well. SunTrust Park in Atlanta is a good example. Last year, I spoke with Nick Daw, a deputy fire marshal in Georgia, for a perspectives interview that ran in NFPA Journal to learn more about how safety is achieved at the 1.1 million square foot facility. What it really comes down to, Daw told me, is planning. The fire department works with the police department and EMS and park officials to plan for events months before they occur. Concerts, he said, are the most difficult. You've got 9,000 people standing on a field that wasn't designed for it. You have to create egress paths from scratch using portable walls, walkways, and signs. For each event, you have to take into account little details like what kind of person might be attending. There should be way more medical tents, for example, when you have 20-somethings at an EDM show than when you've got a relaxed crowd of baby boomers at a Billy Joel concert. Daw told me that he and his team rely heavily on NFPA codes and standards like NFPA 101, NFPA 160, and NFPA 1126 to make these events safe. Besides pre-planning for events, the other key aspect of achieving stadium safety today lies in the many monitoring technologies that are employed to essentially watch you. That's right, there are cameras everywhere in stadiums, and safety personnel use them to keep on top of threats from fist fights to fires to active shooter scenarios. The California Office of Emergency Services released a video in 2017 that detailed how tech is used in stadiums across their state to keep attendees of sports games, concerts, and other events in the stadium safe. It is quiet and it is dark here at Golden One, but don't let that fool you because security is always watching 24-7, especially during games and events. In fact, there's more than meets the eye when it comes to spectator safety. How about that shot by Ben McLemore? The new Golden One Center in downtown Sacramento is the NBA's newest premier arena. Little as Benny Mac, a boy, oh wow. boy, Benny Mac. A sellout game crowd of more than 17,000. 19,000 for concerts like its first, Paul McCartney. But long before the venue opened and crowds filled seats, safety was a priority. So we're here at Golden One Center's Mission Control. Sergeant Bryce Heinlein is one of several officers from the Sacramento PD who can be stationed in the nerve center at the arena. It's part of Golden One Center's Experience Center. Police, fire, security, and other important department staff fill this room every time there's a game or event. It's really cl about collaboration and making sure everybody's on the same page about what is going on at the arena at any specific time. They monitor everything in here, from the sidewalks and traffic outside to the seats and foot traffic inside. Well, it looks like we have social media pulled up here as well. Yes, social media posts about the event going on are treated as valuable intel. We're constantly uh, monitoring uh, social media feeds to see what the top topics are or to see what's trending. Um, it's just an information gathering spot for us to be able to get information and disseminate. And since they're all in the same room, 
They can share any of it instantly and accurately with each other should an incident happen. Conceptually, it's like the Cal OES State Operations Center, but on a much smaller scale. Entertainment venues are a safety focus at Cal OES. The future holds even more possibilities for monitoring technologies. Last summer, I attended an event at historic Fenway Park in Boston, where park officials detailed a future Fenway Park that was equipped with sensing devices that could monitor congestion in hallways and stairwells and let first responders know if you've got people trapped in a certain area of the park in the event of a fire or other emergency. So the next time you find yourself in a stadium enjoying a game or a concert, take some time to think about all the ways you're being kept safe. And remember to smile because you're probably on camera. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know in the comment section and share this video with your friends. Subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more great video content.